Thus far, we've looked at data concerning one variable. Let's now start to look at relationships between two variables. And the concepts that we're going to cover in this and the next screencast are the notions of linear regression and correlation. We start with regression. To see that, let's look at an application. Suppose Points at Industries has been in business since the year 2008. Below is the relationship between the number of years T since opening and the profits P in thousands of dollars. So you can see here, we are now looking at the relationship between two variables, T and P. To make sure that you can read this table properly, the meaning of this ordered pair, 10 comma 182, is 10 years after 2008, which would be 2018, in 2018, they profited 182, and again, this is in thousands of dollars, so $182,000. So profited $182,000. So the first question is, how would you describe the change in profits for Poinsett Industries over the years? So if you read this table from left to right, what's happening to the profits through the years? Take a moment to think about that. In my opinion, as you look at it from left to right, it's generally going up. It's not going up every year, but it's generally going up. I mean, you do have a dip from here to here, and you have a dip from, say, here to here, and here to here, but the profits overall are steadily going up for the most part. They start at 100000 and they end up at 190000 To really be more confident about how the profits are increasing through the years, we should make a plot of all of these data points. Such a, a plot is called a scatter plot in statistics. As you can see here, I already have the scatter, scatter plot uh, computer generated. Uh, in a coming video, you will see in Excel instructions for how to create a scatter plot like this. So now that I've got the scatter plot, as you can see, as the number of years go up, you do generally have an increase in profits, of course. Right here to here it went down, here to here it went down, but overall, the general feeling is that you've got an increase through the years. And not only is there an increase overall through the years, it also looks like it's linear. It's not like it's bent like this or like this or something like that. It's got almost a straight line feel to it. We are going to look at how we can get a line that best fits this data so we can make predictions about the future. That concept is known as linear regression. Let's first establish an idea of what we mean by line of best fit. So here, You've got the scatter plot repeated here. Does this line fit that data well? Certainly not. As we described in the previous screen, the general relationship is it's increasing. As the years go by, the profits are increasing, whereas this line is a decreasing line. It has a negative slope. So this line is certainly not a good representation of this relationship. How about this line here? Well, this line is certainly better. At least it's not decreasing because the overall feeling is that the dots overall are essentially increasing over the years. And this one is still increasing, but it doesn't seem to be increasing enough. The slope is too close to zero. We need it to be a bit steeper, a bit larger. This line right here looks like it fits these data points really well. This line is called the line of best fit, otherwise known as a regression line or a trend line. So the question is, how do we get a line like this and its equation? The method for finding the line of best fit is known as the least squares method, and it's based off of the least squares criterion. Now, you're not going to be expected to actually do this computation by hand. It is fairly involved. You will end up using Excel to not only plot the line, but also give you the equation of the line of best fit. However, I'd like for you to understand the basic idea of where this comes from. So it's based off the least squares criterion. So we want the sum of the squares of the vertical, dis vertical distances from the data points, t comma p, to the line be made as small as possible. So suppose this is your line of best fit, and we know this is not. This was the first line, which doesn't fit it well at all. So what they want to do is find out what these distances are, and we want to make the square of those as small as possible. So let's even forget about the square at this moment. The reason of the squaring is because some of these will have uh, associated with negative numbers and some with positive numbers. But look at all this green here. All this green here, there's a big vertical difference between the red line and the points themselves, as you can see by these green lines here. 
Let's look at the actual line of best fit and what that looks like with respect to the green lines. If we draw in those vertical green lines here between this blue line and each of these points, you get a little something there, something there, something there, 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 so on and so forth. Now, if you were to compare these green lines here to the green lines on the previous slide, the total length of all these green lines is much, much smaller than the total length of all the green lines in the previous one. And this is the smallest possible scenario you could get with these green lines all added up their length, or the squares of them, I should really say. So this is our line of best fit. And again, we are not going to compute the uh, features of this line by hand. We're going to use Excel to not only plot the line on our scatter plot, but to also give us the equation of the line. And as you can see here, I've already done that. The equation of our line is y equals 8.9773x plus 95.583. This is the equation of our line of best fit. We now want to be able to use it to make predictions about the future for Poinsett Industries. At the end of the next screencast on correlation, you will see all of the commands to get Excel to produce the scatter plot, the equation of the line, so on and so forth. So Excel gave us this regression line. We now want to know if this trend continues, how much profit is Poinsett Industries projected to make in the year 2022? The year 2022 corresponds with a T value of 14 since 2022 is 14 years after 2008. So if we want to know what is the predicted amount of profit for that year, we simply need to take this to this 14 and plug it in for t in this equation and do our arithmetic. We get p equals 8.9773 times t, which is 14, plus 95.583. And if you plug this in your calculator, you get 221.2652. Now remember, the profit is in thousands of dollars, so they're not profiting $221. They're profiting $221,265.20. When you multiply by 1,000, the decimal place moves three times to the right. So this is our answer. The predicted amount of money, again, that's not guaranteed by any means, but the predicted amount of money that they're going to profit from in 2022 is $221,265.20. Now, do you think it's a good idea to make predictions about 2042 using this model? 2042 is 20 years further out from 2022. 2022 is only a couple years away from where we are now, but 2042 is 22 years out from now. In general, it's not a good idea to try to make predictions too far out in the future because a lot of things can happen. Technically, lots of small companies won't even be around in 20 years. It's very difficult for small companies to survive over decades of time. So in general, the answer here is no, this is not a good idea. If you're going to make predictions with a regression line, it should be in the near future, not far out. However, some of you might be saying, you might've picked up on, is it even appropriate to use this? Is it appropriate Is it appropriate to use this equation? So this is the best equation that best fits the data, but is it appropriate to use? Does it fit it well? So again, while this equation is the best linear equation fitting the data, does it actually fit it well? This concept is known as correlation. In the next screencast, we're going to cover the concepts of correlation and answer this question of whether we should have even used this equation to make the predictions in the first place.